Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is The Best MEDC, and today I have a video about a little guilty pleasure of mine, and that is tiny knives. There are, surprisingly, a lot of very good, very tiny knives, and uh, I have, I think, my favorites, or some of the best available on the table right here, and I don't think everybody's gonna agree with all my selections here, and you're, I'm probably missing some that you think I should've included. That's all well and good, you can tell me about it in the comments down below, but these, are my favorite tiny knives for EDC, the best ones in my opinion. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. So the first thing that surprised me when I started making this video and planning it out was how many tiny knives there really are. And I'm a fan of huge knives. I carry on me many days, something like a large Nkosi or an Umnumzan. I carry a large knife almost always, but I really, really like small knives as well. And the fact that there are so many just lends credence to the fact that you really don't need much knife, right? This little guy right here is more than enough for most use cases for most people because most of us are just opening packages all the time and that's the, the biggest use case for a knife for most people. I do a lot of food prep with my knife as well and some of these do fall short, but many of them stand up to the task. So I don't think that you always need a really big knife. Sometimes a tiny knife will do. And because of that, there are so many really small knives that I've spent days, literally days, trying to pare this list down and I can't, so we have a lot of these knives, a lot of really little knives, and some of these are duplicates, obviously you can see there are a couple of duplicates here on the table, but uh, what is it, how many did we say it was, 18? 18 knives uh, that we're gonna talk about today, and because there's so many here, I'm not gonna dwell on individual specifications because there's just so many knives to go through, and that's a lot for me to remember, but also it's easy to look up, so everything's gonna be linked down below, and if you wanna look into it further, you can. With that said, I don't even know where to begin. Actually, I do, I do. We're gonna start with the McB. I don't think you can make a video about tiny knives and not include this knife. This is the Spyderco McNeese McB, and I think it is probably quintessential tiny EDC knife. It is the maximum utility in a very, very small package. I think the ergonomics on this knife are really what make it so great. It is a little awkward to open, right? You're not gonna be spidey flicking this thing anytime soon. But once you do get it open, which you kind of have to like pinch to get it started and then slide it open, once you do have it open, the ergos are just so good. The shape of this blade is really conducive to just tearing through boxes. And that's, that's really what this thing is going to be best for is just opening packages. It's a really fancy package opener. And of course it can, you know, extend those duties beyond that. But for the most part, that's really what this is for. Uh, just beautiful finish work on it. I love the pivots on this. It's got kind of like a golf ball or hammered design for the pivot. Uh, and you see these things customized to no end. There are a lot of different, you know, one-offs of it and exclusives, but the, the McB is just really, really nice for what it is. And it is a perfect fifth pocket knife. Um, what you're getting with this is really small blade, 1.5 inches. The overall length is 3.8 and the weight is just 1.7 ounces. So this thing is quite literally forgettable because it, you're just gonna put it in your pocket and forget it's there. I did it for several days, didn't even realize that I had this thing with me a lot of the time, uh, but that's, that's kind of what you're looking for with something like this. Really tiny knife that gets the job done, but doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So Spyderco McNeese McB, this one's gonna set you back about $140. Since we're on that Spyderco train, let's stay with it. This is a knife that I picked out personally before I ever planned on making this video. This is just a knife that I was really interested in because it seemed like it packed a whole lot of punch in a small package. This is the Spyderco Dragonfly. I don't even think this is the Dragonfly 2. I think this is the original, uh, but there's a lot of different versions of the Dragonfly, different handle materials, different blade steels, different blade shapes. This obviously is a drop point version with G10, OD green G10 scales. It's a lockback and it's just really solid for what it is. Of course, this is the most expensive version because I did get the G10. So this one was closer to $150, I think, 120 actually. Uh, but the lowest, the cheapest you're gonna find this is around 70 bucks. This knife, the overall length on it is five and a half inches. Your blade length is 2.25 inches. And then your weight is, uh, on this one, your weight is two ounces. If you get one of the FRN versions, that one's gonna be closer to 1.2. So much lighter if you stick with FRN over 
G10. Like I said, this knife does come in a bunch of different configurations. You can get it in a hawk's bill, you can get it in a Warncliffe blade, you can get it in the uh, Salt series, so H1 steel, so it's super corrosion resistant. This knife comes in so many configurations and I think that's one of the things that makes it the best, but it's just a really good slicey tiny knife. I loved carrying this knife, still throw it in the pocket from time to time. I think the uh, Dragonfly and Dragonfly 2 this list couldn't exist without it, just like the McBee. The next knife on the list is one of the newest knives in my collection, one that I've been eyeing for a while, TRM. They're just knocking it out of the park with everything they produce. Everything is top notch, really high quality stuff for really good prices. This one's $179, so 180 bucks. It's not exactly a cheap knife. It's nowhere near the cheapest. It's nowhere near the most expensive. This one's right around the middle of the pack, but what you're getting for that money is a lot of bang for your buck. Um, just everything out of, of TRM is really, really good. The action's good. Fit and finish, everything's great. It's really hard to complain about anything from TRM and the Nerd is no different. Um, I love that they have hot swappable scales so you can just pull these two screws and take the scale off without having to disassemble the whole knife. That's super nice. Um, same for the other side. You don't have to disassemble the knife to swap out the scales, which is really cool. Uh, with this knife, you're getting a five and a half inch overall length. The blade is 2.2 inches and that is a 20 CV. My notes say drop point, but this looks a little more like a clip or a reverse tanto to me. A clip point, reverse tanto, that is definitely not a drop point because it's got a clip right there. So regardless, semantics, uh, you don't have a thumb hole or stud. You actually have just kind of a, a mill pocket and you can, you can flick this knife open. It is a little weird getting used to it, but it works. And uh, the ergos on it are really good. Really nice deep carry clip. I think this thing is really, really sick. Oh, and the weight, super lightweight, 1.6 ounces. So the TRM Nerd is a big, massive win in my book. One of the most high quality small knives for the money that you can get, period. Next up on the list, let's just slide the scale all the way to the most expensive, at least in my collection. There are other versions of the knives that I have here that are more expensive, but this one is $400. This is the Chris Reeve Mnandi. Mnandi means beautiful and rightfully so. This is a very beautiful knife. It is very gentlemanly. And I think this is probably the best all around knife on the list. Like if I had to choose just one knife, out of all of these to keep in my collection and use every day, this would probably be it. It is uh, actually the biggest knife on the list as well. I almost didn't include it because I was trying to stay around two and a half inches or below for the blade length. And this one's actually 2.74 inches. The overall length on it is also the biggest at 6.375 inches, uh, but the weight, really lightweight. It is just 1.5 ounces. And, and I think the reason I still included this on the list is even though it's longer than most, it's still a very small knife and, it, and it's because it's very narrow and it feels a little more dainty than, you know, a typical Chris Reeve knife. It's still tough. It's still really high quality stuff, but it does feel much smaller than even like a small Sabenza. Like it feels significantly smaller. So I, I felt like it needed to be included on this list because I think this is easily one of the best smaller knives that you can buy. Again, this one's around $400. This is the Macassar Ebony version. It comes in a bunch of different uh, inlay options and I think it's just a beautiful, really good knife. And if I had to choose just one from all of these, it'd be the Imanati. Hands down, no question. You know what was gonna happen? Uh, Civivi, they're almost dominating this whole video. Uh, it's kind of a toss up between Spyderco and Civivi because they both have so many models. It's hard to not just load their stuff into these videos. This one, I think, was what inspired this video. I uh, saw this first at Blade Show earlier this year. This is the Kai V, and it is a double detent slip joint, so no locking blade. But this right here, I think, is like the best little package opener that you could have other than having a utility knife. It, that's what it's meant for, right? This thing is just pop it open, cut open a box, close it, you know, no fuss, no hassle. I think it's really good for that. It's legal pretty much everywhere, right? No locking blade. So uh, I think this thing is, is just a really interesting take on a double detent because it is, you know, you're obviously not gonna use this thing for a whole lot, but for, for opening packages and, 
you know, quick cuts, small tasks, this thing is gonna be really good for that. So the overall length on this knife is just four inches. Your blade length is 1.5 inches. That is a 9CR18 MOV steel with a clip point. Like I said, like this one, I wouldn't say is a clip point. I would have called this one like a warning or something, but it is, it is kind of odd. It's angled up, which really lets you cut really well with this thing. I love the, the shape and, and size of this thing for what it's for. Uh, it's not something I would carry every single day, but it is a really cool take, something unusual, something really different. And I like that about it. The weight on this is also really light. It's 1.4 ounces. I mean, this thing is really tiny. Just to show you a little size comparison, here it is with the McB, really about the same footprint on these knives. Uh, and it's it's a little bit lighter too. And the, the McB is already very light. So I think the biggest point of contention for me on this knife would just be the price, $40. It seems like a lot for what this is. Like it's not a bad price, especially when you can compare it to everything else in Civivi's lineup. Um, you're getting about the same features and everything minus a lock bar of some sort or a locking mechanism of some sort, but just for the size, it does feel a little off. It doesn't for this because this is a titanium frame lock from Spyderco, blah, 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 you know, 120 or so bucks for this. Doesn't feel too bad, but for, for $40, this one almost feels like a little bit of a stretch. 30, 35 might've felt a little better, but at $40, I'm not fussing too much. I'm just saying it's like, if there was anything to complain about with the kai -V, it'd just be the price point. Keeping on with the Civivi train and kind of flipping the script a little bit, uh, talking about really, really good value for the money, we have the baby banter. The ergonomics on this are really good. I actually prefer the shape of this one more than the full-size banter. Uh, and at $60, this thing is actually a really good value. Nitro V steel, you have perfect action, just like the original banter. Uh, better ergos, in my opinion, liner lock, bearings, everything about it is good. Deep carry, reversible pocket clip, and it comes in purple with gold studs. I think it looks good. The overall length on this knife is 5.46 inches. The uh, blade length on it is 2.34, and this one's actually getting a little heavier. It's not heavy by any means, but heavier in terms of everything here that we've talked about at two ounces. So the, the baby banter, $60. I think this is a really, really good buy at 60 bucks. So this is one that I, I absolutely had to have in this video. I think it's one of the most interesting Civivis on the market. I really love it. I like the guys who designed this, Ferrum Forge. I'm a huge fan of all of their designs and the Odium is no different. This is just a killer knife, beautiful ergos. That's something that Ferrum Forge nails every time. The ergonomics are always so good. Uh, the only thing I'd complain about is the blade steel. So D2, I typically don't have a problem with it, except for the fact that I tend to rust it really bad and Civivi has started using Nitro V and other steels in the same price point. So if I could get this knife in Nitro V, I know you can get it in Damascus, but if I could get it in Nitro V, I'd be even happier. But because it comes in a coated blade, I'm okay with it. So this one has an overall length of 6.19 inches. The blade length is 2.65. That is a D2 once again, and a drop point. Uh, same as what you're typically used to with Civivi. Bearings, liner lock, perfect action, deep carry pocket clip, reversible as well, and just so good. I mean, it just kind of packs a punch. I think this knife is overlooked by too many people. I think it's really good. Uh, I would like to see it in more colors, more blade options. This is one that I think too many people sleep on. I just had to include it. It's really going to be right there with the baby banter uh, in terms of which one I would recommend. I think I'd go with the Odium over the baby banter just because I like the, the size and shape a little more. But for I forget, 2.5 ounces on the weight. So this one's actually the heaviest so far. And the price between $50 and $90 if you want to upgrade and get the Damascus, which actually comes with wood handles. I think that one looks really nice. I probably should have picked that one up for myself, but I got the black one. All right. It's it's about time that I, I show a zero tolerance knife on this channel. Uh, I've not talked about zero tolerance much at all. I get a lot of questions about it. I don't personally have any problems with zero tolerance. They just don't do a whole lot that interests me. A lot of their designs are just not stuff I would choose. And I do think that they're they're innovating a lot slower than a lot of other companies. And uh, that's a whole nother video that I could make. But this one right here, I think is, is a really good move by ZT. Really good small knife. Not much to fuss about, really great action. This is the 0022, and it is very small. It's, it's almost too small. It is a two finger knife, just based on how they've set it up. But for light cutting tasks, this thing is actually quite nice. 
20 CV blade. Your overall length on this is gonna be 4.875 inches. Blade length on it is 1.875, and that is a 20 CV clip point. Weight on it is 1.75 ounces. Super lightweight. Carbon fiber scale on this side and uh, titanium frame lock on the other. Cool small knife, $220. So a lot of money for a very small knife. And I, I think in general, just based on everything I have here, this is one of the best knives available in this list. Just in terms of sheer facts, specs, build quality, everything about it is really good. But for me personally, visually, this knife just doesn't do a whole lot for me. I think it's a great knife, it's just not the one for me. The very same could be said for the next knife. Uh, I know for a fact, if I made this video and did not include this knife, so many of you would be upset. So I bought one, I tried it out. It's just not for me, but that's not to say it's not a great knife. This is the Cold Steel Tough Light. It's actually the first Cold Steel I've ever owned or handled. Uh, and I think it's a tough knife. It's probably the toughest knife that I have. I mean, this thing is a tank for how small it is. It's got OS 8 steel. Overall length of this knife is six inches. The blade length is 2.5 inches. That is a Warncliffe, and it's a hollow ground Warncliffe in OS 8A steel. And, and I think the true highlight of this knife is the ergonomics. This thing just melts into your hand and it's so comfortable. But the killer feature for me, killer in terms of something that just destroys it for me, is the clip position. It's tipped down. It is reversible, but I, I want to tip up clip. That's something that I'm just not going to carry this knife because of that. It's sad that that's how it is, but that's how it is. Uh, and it does have that super strong triad lock. So very similar to a, a back lock, but a little different. And uh, that does mean it's not a very fidgety knife either, if that's something that matters to you. But for $25 to $30, $40, I think this thing is, is really good for what it is if you can get past some of those things like the clip position. Oh, and the last thing, weight on this is 2.5 ounces. So there you go. That is the Cold Steel Tough Light. Next up, uh, another no-brainer, one of my favorite knives period, but also especially on this list is the Protec Runt 5. I have it in two versions. I have it in a reverse Tonto in the bronze. This was the uh, Blade Show exclusive that were, you know, almost mid-tech, I guess, that were hand ground by Mike Irie. It's got the mosaic button. This one is another exclusive. I don't really know the details about this one, but the OD green is not something that was uh, openly available. I don't, I don't know the details behind it, but I have that one in a Warncliffe. Uh, this one is 20 CV. This one is uh, 154 CM. So th those are basically the two that you're going to be looking at. You have those two different blade options. You have those two different blade seals and you have either aluminum or bronze. And the pricing on these goes from about 135 for an aluminum one, just a plain Jane aluminum one. The, the mid techs or whatever these one offs, these were like 340 ish. And then there were some laser engraved special editions that are more like 1400. These things get expensive and that's just kind of how like rare custom Protex get, but these things fire so hard. Um, the weight obviously is gonna be very different if you have a bronze versus an aluminum one, but regardless, you have an overall length of 5.125 inches, blade length of 1.96 inches, that is 154 CM or 20 CV, as I said, in either a reverse Tonto or Warncliffe. Uh, weight on it, if you have an aluminum one, it's gonna be closer to 2.1 ounces. Bronze is closer to four at 3.76. And obviously this is a button lock auto on phosphor bronze washers, as you can expect from ProTech. Best clip on any knife period is the ProTech deep carry. I love it. Everything is so neat and tidy. The recessed screws, the recessed clip. This thing is just great. And uh, don't sleep on it. If you see them pop up and you're on the fence about it, you should buy one because they get gone quick and they are really, really good. ProTech Runt 5, get one. Next up is something you've not seen yet. And if you have, you haven't handled it, at least not many people have. This is a prototype of the Copita from Urban EDC Supply and Jesper Voxnez. Uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Jesper's work. He is a master of small knives and ergonomics and, and maximizing the utility of a small blade. He deals a lot with small blades and because of that, He's just really honed in on what makes a small knife a good knife. And the Copita is probably one of his best knives yet. Uh, it's just, I think it's a little plain Jane in terms of, of visuals and the shape, but this one has some really cool details like 
the pivot screws are, are custom with this little like interlocking circle design. The clip, like this milled pocket for the clip is really cool. It's got kind of a cross design to it. And the clip itself is really good. I've had uh, a few knives from him and a lot of these small knives that do not have great clips. This clip is extremely tough. I like that. Uh, titanium frame lock flipper with a choil, like everything about this is really, really good. But this is the Copita from Urban ADC Supply. It's an exclusive and they're on pre-order right now. The price on them right now is 199 and up. I'm not sure exactly what all different configurations there are that might cause the price to go up from there, but 199 is your starting price. The overall length on the Copita is 5.46 inches. It has a 2.26 inch drop point M390 blade. Uh, and again, that choil is just gives you a really good grip on this knife. Uh, feels bigger than it is really. And your weight, 2.2 ounces. I think this thing's really nice. I'd like to see it in a few different options, right? Uh, different colors, like I'm, obviously you guys know I'm not a huge blue fan. If they had this thing in maybe green or, or bronze, I think it looks sick. But anyway, that is the Copita. They're available on pre-order right now. They're shipping next year, but if you want one, I think the pre-order window is open through the end of the year, or at least sometime in December. So the, the pre-order is still open as of the time of this video, but there you go. That is the Urban EDC Supply Vox Copita. Now, since we're on the topic of Urban EDC Supply exclusives, uh, this one is the old Baby Barlow from Lundquist. I really liked this one. It's got that clip point blade. It's just kind of modern, traditional front flipper. Like, I really like it. Really cool, different, small, fifth pocket carry knife. I was a huge fan of this. Uh, I got to try these before they came out. Always been a huge fan of it, but they're bringing it back. So now we have three new versions of the Baby Barlow. These are upcoming. They're available for pre-order right now. Same deal as Copita. They're gonna be open for a few more weeks uh, and shipping sometime in 2022. But this time around, we have a Warncliffe blade, M390. And this one is a liner lock, which I really like because it makes it a lot easier to open on these smaller ones. I got a few notes about some of these other knives coming up that uh, almost made them not make the list, but I really like this, especially in this black micarta. It's a really good looking knife. So we have it in a black micarta, green G10 with that orange pivot collar, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what you'd call that. It's not really a pivot collar. It's not really a bolster, an accent. Overall length, five inches with a two inch Warncliffe M390 blade. Obviously this one's black coated. Um, front flipper, just like the original Baby Barlow. Really great action. They've made it a little easier to get to the lock bar as well. Deep carry clip, but that's really the main difference is gonna be the blade shape and uh, the materials. They're, they're very similar in, in all aspects other than that. Um, very similar construction, same shape, size, and everything like that. The weight on it, the weight is 2.4 ounces. Uh, I think the all titanium one's gonna be a little bit heavier than that, but really cool small knife. Same price as the Capita as well. Once again, this is the Baby Barlow from Justin Lundquist and Urban EDC Supply. All right, next up, a hugely popular knife since its original release, of course, is the Elementum. And recently, Civivi announced the Elementum Mini. This is more of a keychain knife, no pocket clip on this one. But I felt like it should be included because I think this is a really good small knife. This one, the overall length on it is 4.33 inches. Your blade length is 1.83. That's a 14C28N drop point blade. It's a flipper on bearings. It is 1.7 ounces, very small, lightweight. You can put this on the keys and forget about it. Um, or you can just throw this down in the fifth pocket or your main pocket. I mean, this thing's just really tiny. You have this brushed copper on one side and brushed steel liner lock or frame lock on the other side. The action on this is really good despite being so small. And uh, I think it's a really cool knife. It's not something that would, I would carry as a primary. Certainly could. Maybe throw it in a little survival tin like I've done in the past, but this is gonna be a really good package opener, basically. Price on this is probably another point of contention for some of you, $42 for something that's this small. I think it's fine. You're not getting as much bang for your buck as you would with a real full-sized Elementum because those are right around $50. Uh, but for a keychain knife, I think this thing's really cool. And if you didn't think you could go smaller than that, you would be wrong. This is the smallest knife on the table. This is the Reich 
Hummingbird. And yes, I know there are smaller knives than the Rike Hummingbird, but I think this is the smallest, highest quality knife that you can find. Uh, too small for me, if I'm gonna be completely honest. It's almost unusable, like you can cut stuff with it, but I struggle to open this thing, even though it's a flipper, because it's hard to hold. Like I can, but a lot of the time I end up pushing the lock bar. When knives get this small, they should really probably be liner locks because it's just, it's hard to hold onto the thing and flip it open and not press the lock bar. So the overall length on the Rike Hummingbird is 3.75 inches. Your blade length is 1.5. It's a Dama Steel uh, drop point blade. Weight on this, 0.6 ounces. It's sub one ounce. It's so lightweight. It's like, you, it's barely anything. It just almost doesn't exist because it's so small and small, so lightweight. It is a titanium frame lock flipper on bearings. And it's just like, it's honestly a marvel that this thing is as good as it is. I mean, the quality is so good for how small it is. And uh, it does have a clip on it too. You can put this thing in your, your pocket. You could clip it. But it also comes with uh, this chain and Kydex sheath. So you can clip this thing around your neck if that's your jam. Definitely not my jam, but uh, I think this thing's really nice for what it is. $135 though, so not cheap. It's uh, pretty expensive for what it is. Now, if you do like the idea of this and you want something just maybe a little bit bigger and maybe a little more usable, there's also the Best Tech Reticulin. Very similar knife, just a little bigger. Uh, similar aesthetics too. It's just a, a different knife, a little bit bigger, but same gist. So I wanted to include them both, but we had too many knives. So I went with the Reich Hummingbird. I almost did not include this. This is the Spyderco Techno 2. And I think this is a tremendously good small knife, but I almost didn't include it. It is smaller, it's shorter than the Imnandi, and it is smaller than the Tough Light, but the Tough Light has a small blade. So that one kind of got on the list by a technicality. This one is just a really good small knife that I think people should know about and it should be on your radar if you like small knives. And if you like small knives, you probably probably already know about this. But the Spyderco Techno 2, this is everything you've come to love about Spyderco in a small package that's still usable, definitely more usable than the McBee. Um, and it just fills the hand a lot more than a lot of these small knives, but it's still relatively small. Price on this is $230, par for the course for a Spyderco of this caliper and a titanium frame lock. Uh, overall length is 5.99 and your blade length is 2.55. That's CTS XHP in a sheep's foot. And the weight, I think this is the heaviest one, 3.4 ounces, but it has a really big, nice deep carry wire pocket clip that is reversible. It is a titanium frame lock on phosphor bronze washers and really good action. If you don't have sausage fingers like me, I think it's really good. It's just definitely one of the bigger knives on the list and almost didn't make the cut just because I felt like it's not super small. It's not really tiny, but it is still a pretty small knife. Next knife, I, I've been getting a lot of questions about this since I made the video before it came out. This was a, a knife that came out last year. It was a first for Blade HQ. This is the Blade HQ Vox Dapper. And I really like this knife, but there, there are some caveats. First things first, there were some QC issues. Mine at the time did not have any issues, no lockup problems, no nothing. It did have a little uneven grind. This one doesn't seem to have that. However, this one I bought that I got recently had a little bit of lock rock. Not much, but just a little bit. Like you could lock it and you could feel just a tiny amount of, of motion in the pivot after it was already, the lock was engaged. So what I did is I took it apart and I took this liner and I bent that lock bar in even further. Just bent it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit and put it back together, see how it was, take it apart and do it again. And it got a little better every time. And now totally solid lockup. So I think it sucks that you would have to do something like that when you buy a knife. I think for what you have to pay for this, it should ship totally functional and, and you shouldn't have to tweak it However, I like the shape and size and design of this knife so much that I think it's it's one that I hate that it had lock rock issues, but it's something that can be resolved pretty easily. And if you bought this knife and tried to do that and it didn't resolve, I would return it. So with that being said, the Vox Dapper from Blade HQ, I think is a really good design for a small knife. I think it fits in the hand better than just about any of the others here, even 
the tough light, which is like a glove. Uh, I think it's really cool. It is a little bit of a different grip, right? You have this middle finger, like that's your dominant finger when you go to grip this knife because that that dip, your, your index is actually up here closer to the pivot. But if you grab it like that, this is a really secure grip. It's a little different, but this is just, this is Vox territory. This is what he's good at. This knife overall length is 6.125. Your blade length is 2.375 inches. That is an M390 clip point blade. It's a liner lock on bearings with a flipper tab, very small flipper tab. And what I love is once this blade is deployed, that flipper tab is totally gone. Just beautiful design, love it. Love to see it. The weight on this one is 2.4 ounces. There is an all titanium one, which is gonna cost a little more and weigh a little more. Um, the, the price on this one, the micarta version is 175. The price on the full titanium is $200. And again, uh, I do hate that there are some QC issues. I, I would say just be aware. And if you buy it and you do have some QC issues, maybe try to get it exchanged, replaced, or just return it. Uh, it's something that I just want you guys to be aware of. If you do wanna buy this knife, they're, it's well documented at this point, but if you get a good one, it's a good one. Like really, really good small knife. One of my favorites. Okay, last one, I promise. I know this list has been very long, but I hope that it's been worth it. Uh, but the last one, the reason it's last is because they're not super available, but I do think it is easily top of the list here. I'd say top three. Uh, it is just a super good knife that not enough people know about. This is the Hellion Machine Collective Transient Micro. It is just a very, very small, high quality knife. $275, so not cheap, not cheap by any means. Very small, but still very, very usable, very functional. And uh, I love this knife. I've carried this knife more than any other knife on the table. It's just really good. Not much else to say about it. I think this is the only one other than the Odium and the TRM Nerd that I can spidey flick, but this one I don't have to like think about it. I can just do it. Some of the others just kind of hard to open. This thing can be front flipped if you're, you're really good at it, but uh, it is a flipper. That flipper tab disappears again. Like I said, really good design. The overall length on this is 5.625 inches. Blade length is 2.5 inches. It is an S35VN drop point blade, titanium frame lock on bearings, 1.65 ounces. I think this one is just a, a really solid knife that not enough people know about. Uh, I don't know if he's doing another run of these. I, I genuinely don't. Uh, I know they're out on his site, but there are some on Fanatic Edge as of the time of this video, I believe. So if you are interested, I think you can still get a couple of these. They're not widely available. They are available. You may have to like, you know, scrounge around on the secondary and maybe you can get one, or maybe you guys can convince him to do a second run of them. I think it's a good knife. And I think a lot of people slept on it because it is so small. And the price tag, $275, it's no small amount, but this is a super good tiny knife that not enough people know about. So there you go. I, I think my top five, if I had to choose just five out of this whole entire list, it'd be these right here. We have the Hellion Machine Collective Transient Micro, the Chris Reeve Nandi, TRM Nerd, Protec Runt 5, and the Spider Code Dragonfly. And I, I wanna give a little shout to this one. This is, a, a would say, an honorable mention in my tops because I, I can't include it because it does have some QC issues, which sucks. However, I love this knife. I think it is a great design, and I just hate that it has a little bit of lock issues sometimes and uneven grind, but if you can get a good one, it's a really good knife. The, the shape and design, the aesthetic, like everything about it is so good if you can get one that doesn't have issues. So take that risk if you're willing, but it, it's really hard for me to put it in my top five because it does have those issues. And I don't think it could knock one of these out of this spot. There's just so many good small knives. I have really struggled to make this video, like true struggle because it's just, it's hard to narrow down. But this is, this is my favorites and here, We've already talked about the rest. There you go. Best small knives on the market right now. What did I miss? Tell me what I missed, what you think should have been included or what shouldn't have been on this list. Tell me in the comments down below. Everything will be linked in the description if you wanna check out more, look at specs, maybe buy one for yourself if you do. Those are affiliate links. 
and it will help support the show. I'd be very, very thankful if you did that. Also, you can go to patreon.com and support the show there. But with that said, and until next time, carry on.